for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a right, nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code MACECAM or STAT to get up to $250 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a special pick. It's the easiest way to win on Underdog. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Murder, what up, man? What's good, man? Hey, shit, how are you? Man, rough, rough. Pause. Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sound like a dog. Rough, rough. <laughs> All right. I have something to talk about, but I'm going to wait because today we are joined with our analyst, Maurice Claret. Mo, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, baby? Chilling, Mo. You look like you you in the sunshine state or something. I'm a, I'm a, I've been to Floridian for the last two weeks. Oh, you getting, you getting black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, I, I do want to say this. I told everybody who I ran into at the parks and just moving around Central Florida that uh, it's a lot of love for this show. And they just wanted me to say, tell everybody from the show hello and that they, they love the show. So that's to all the people who I met down here in Florida. I, I let y'all know that I was going to uh, let the brothers know. Thank and you, man. Stat. We tell them we appreciate yeah, it, man. Thanks. Thank Always. you very much. Okay. So before we even start, Maurice, you're wearing a Huskies, you know, the logo, which is very on brand. Mace, Cowboys. <laughs> oh my goodness. That. I have to ask, because I know if I want to know, the people want to know. Well, actually, let me see how fast I could be on my feet. I figured JJ Reddick got the job. I might as well start dressing like a coach. Who knows? I could be head coach any day now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't. He was fast you. on his feet, though. Yeah, that was good. I mean, if you became coach, I would definitely be at your games. But Okay. Cowboys. You coming to the games, killer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Cowboys. You was coaching, coaching Jacksonville, maybe. <laughs> nah. Not the Cowboys. Nah. nah, nah. Cowboys ain't going to win. <laughs> Jacksonville got a better chance of winning before the Cowboys. Oh, man. And, they, and, they don't, and a lot of times, see, a lot of niggas think because of the Knicks and the Cowboys and they have good teams. It ain't really about the team. It's about the jinx. The fan, <laughs> they be dumb franchises as jinx, B. Every year the Cowboys got, oh, you see who they got on defense? Oh, they, Dak Prescott this year's top five quarterback, da, da, da. Y'all niggas got a black cat in the arena, my nigga. Y'all not going to win. I don't care how good a team y'all got. I think the Knicks got a better chance of winning before the Cowboys at this point. But they not going to win as long as Spike Lee there. Spike Lee, you never listen to me. I'm telling you, just watch from the skybox of stay in Brooklyn. You actually got your own team. You're from Brooklyn. Switch over to the Nets. You're, you're jinxing Manhattan. We're from Manhattan. <laughs> you're jinxing us. Yeah. Stay you got the, a team now. You have a team now. <laughs> Stay in Brooklyn, bro. 40 acres and a mule and all that <laughs> other shit. You're fucking it up for the franchise, my nigga. <laughs> but I actually think the Cowboys are more jinxed than the Knicks, my personal opinion. Okay. So let's discuss the SB. So they happened mm. last night, and it, it was to honor individuals and groups in sports. So I want to discuss some of the awards and basically get you guys' thoughts on if you think this person was the right fit for the awards. So we're gonna go through a couple, go through a couple of the names on the list. So the first one, best athlete in men's sports is Patrick Mahomes. Maurice, I'm gonna let you go first and let me know what you think about him winning that award. I think it was the right choice. Uh, I don't um, think of anybody who stood out more uh, last year than Patrick. I was trying to think to myself who would have had a competing chance. 
Uh, but I think with Patrick Mahomes, it was the right choice. Yeah, I think Pat Mahomes was definitely the right choice. But I wouldn't have been mad if they would have gave the award this year to Jalen Brunson. He had a um, a great, great year. I just think with um, Pat Mahomes winning the championship, it kind of put him over over um, Jalen Brunson. Yeah. But anybody watching sports that love basketball could say he had a phenomenal year. Patrick Mahomes, it's not even really close. He's actually <laughs> been dominating for a long time. And one thing about Patrick Mahomes, you know, leaving – Losing, pardon me, Tyreek Evans. There was a lot of speculation if he's still going to be able to be the quarterback that he is, even though Kelsey's been there the whole time. Um, he's phenomenal. I've never seen the nigga throw a behind the back pass, a left handed pass, on his feet scramble. Um, and this is this isn't just this year. I know the award is for this year, but over the years his consistency has just been amazing. Whether they, they win the Super Bowl or not, uh, he's always in the uh, conference championship so I just can't really say enough about it Jalen Brunson he had a good year but Patrick Mahomes wins and he, and he gets to the at least the conference championship Jalen Brunson didn't do that I think he had a I think he had a great breakout year though Jalen Brunson pardon me Tyreek Hill my bad yeah okay. losing Tyreek Hill so We're good. okay and then the best team is South Carolina women's basketball team Maurice what do you think yeah, that was a um, – obviously, you know, I wanted the Huskies to win, but when you kind of see when they had a uh, Jay performing, when you had uh, Don Staley getting the um, uh, the, the Perseverance Award, I think that that was the award that she got, and you just kind of see what they've accomplished in women's sports, be it with, you know, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and everything around women's sports. I'm not to say that they, they aren't deserving. Me, selfishly, I wanted the Huskies to get it. Uh, but they definitely earned it right. You know, for the last few years, uh, South Carolina, for, for a while, South Carolina, as long as she's been there, has been great. So, you know, I don't think you go wrong with that. And uh, shout out to Don Staley. She had a beautiful speech after the um, the award that she accepted for the uh, the Perseverance Award. Well, I'm, I'm going to go out and say, you know, I thought Boston was a team that had a phenomenal year, and I wouldn't have been um... – I would have voted for Boston to have the um, best team this year, being that um, they had so much riding on this season and they actually delivered. Um, I didn't see South Carolina as much as I watched Boston, so my, my favorite would have been Boston for that award. And what is the exact award again? What's that? Best team. Best team? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. South Carolina. Niggas won a chip and didn't lose. They lose no games. Yeah. They went the whole season and they lose and won the chip. You know, like the Patriots were in here, you know, them niggas was uh, however many in those, 17, 18, 19, you know, they, they changed 17. it. Yeah, yep. 17 and 0. Get to the championship and lose to the Giants. Like the goes, oh, regular season, then win the championship. I'm going with South Carolina. I'm not mad at Mason's answer with Boston because you can't, nobody's going to go undefeated in the NBA. That's just not going to happen. But, Nobody was even close to Boston, like in the Eastern Conference, even in the Western Conference. They had a lead on everybody in the NBA. So I'm not mad at Boston either. But if I had to pick, I'm just gonna go with whoever didn't whoever didn't lose. Uh, would be my opinion. Yeah, because normally when teams do not lose in the regular season, they normally slip up in the Final Four or get right to the end and be crying. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is a phenomenal feat. Because when you undefeated people, definitely are trying to. Knock that O out. Yeah, I lost. I just told nigga all day. We was 23 and 0 my senior year and lost in the first round. I ain't go back to school. And then the best record breaking performance, Caitlin Clark, Maurice. Yeah, this kind of like, I think the, the whole show, I think when they produced it, they wanted to make sure that they celebrated women and women's sports. And I'm not saying that she wasn't deserving of it. You know, she's been a talk of, uh, of all of sports this entire year. But they did a great job just highlighting women's sports. I think that, um, you know, everybody's complained about the, the the new resurgence around women's basketball and the focal point being her. Uh, but shout out to ESPN for for celebrating women this this entire deal, even with uh, Serena hosting. But, um, you know, big ups to Caitlin Clark. And I can't remember of any other story being as big as hers. This just in sports probably in the last five years. And, and I, I know it was a huge deal when she um, – broke the record so of course you know she was going to get it 
Man, I feel like they put this award there for her to win just to get her a award, you know. Um, when they was doing the SBs, it seemed like this is a, a title or or personnel that that is making a lot of headways and, and what better way to capitalize off it than to give her the award for best record breaking. I mean, they could have given that award to um Shikari. There's other people that could have won that award. Um and it just seemed like it's like when they talk about Wimby, like they setting aside this award. This was the first time I felt like most people feel about Caitlin Clark because I've been championing for her a long time. But right here, I can understand like, OK, now enough is enough. Now let her earn some things. Don't give her everything that she gets. I understand she bring ratings. I understand that it is better for the business if she's um, celebrated. But let her earn something. Um, <laughs> every time I turn the TV on, she's breaking some record. <laughs> I, every every week, it was a new record being broke. I, I I don't know who else to give it to. To be honest with you, that's why I just asked Stat, who's yeah. the nominees? So, Caitlin Clark, Christian McCaffrey, Tara Vanderveer. Nobody yeah. broke more records than her this year. She broke every fucker every time you turned the TV on. A new record was being broke. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know a lot of the records. Like, yo, most threes. She, she, look, she, uh, did she surpass and get the most points? Of course, she got the most points for her school. But what about in uh, NCAA uh, like history? Yeah, she, she got that record too, right? Most she, points. Uh, rookies yeah. at yeah. a certain yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially Kyle before, especially before the WNBA, like the college season. I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Seemed like every fucking week. A new record was being broke every time we turn on a fucking game. When she was in college, I ain't you no know, NBA. She got, she just broke a record or whatever. It looked like Angel Reese is getting all the records right now. But I'm talking about in college for five weeks in a row. It looked like we was just watching a new record being set by her. So uh, Christian McCaffrey, I'm a big Christian McCaffrey fan. And who? Tara Vanderveer. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Cause when <laughs> it, they said she made more more <laughs> points like than that. everybody. I think yeah. she got the record for the whole for NCAA. Men, yeah, like yeah. if we going off, oh, if, yeah, if, the, right. yeah, if yeah. the award is because record setting records and breaking records, I can't think of nobody else to give it to this year. Now, Mo, do you remember that that being a, a award every year? I don't know. I'm not really in tune with the SPs. Like I'll I'll like watch the highlighted versions of them, but like, I don't know all like the nuanced awards and, and things of that nature. Even when you were talking about Caitlin Clark, like, I don't know if that was something new or not Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's something new that they created for her uh, or not, but I don't, um, I'm not into just all the categories like that. Yeah, that's what I was speaking to, not not necessary. And sorry, not to cut you off. It is a common award because in 2022 with Steph Curry, like there's different people. Oh, okay. it. So it wasn't just like, oh, we made it for Caitlin Clark. Yeah, that's what I was speaking to. It felt like that. <laughs> I just thought this was the celebration of women. Like if you look at, like if you just look at the theme of it, if you go back and just like, if you go and look at Don Staley's speech and just look at her reading from the teleprompter and just kind of how they prop that up. And you look at the theme of sports in general, there's no, like outside of Bronny and outside of the Celtics, there's no really dominant sport sporting stories that are new, fresh, and mm-hmm. that would bring a different audience. And I thought like this platform was more, like the celebration of women. You know, you go get Serena, you go give this award to Don Staley. Not to say these people aren't deserving, but I thought like this whole show was just for that. And to answer your question, Mace, um, because I looked it up, 2001 they started this uh, awards and it's anybody from Michael Phelps to Steph Curry to Drew Brees to Russell Westbrook, uh, Peyton Manning. uh, Yeah, it's been going on for over 20 years. Oh, okay. I didn't know anybody, I just looked it up. And then, Maurice, just real quick to your point, I know you were saying, like, this seems like the celebration of women, but this has been a game-changing year for women in sports. So I think, like, obviously, like you said, rightfully so, but I think that shows the impact that women's sports has made because a lot of people are tuning in. Like, viewership is going up. So I think, like, that kind of works in alignment with what Who did that, that? Caitlin. Yeah. Right. That, like, give I can props. say that. I give her props. I've never said 
said that I like, <laughs> right. just, just, let, yeah, just, make sure, yeah. just make sure you know the who's responsible. Okay, for women in sports and viewership, yes, but like it's she's been, not the best player, but that's a whole nother debate for another thing. So is it is it right to say it's been a breakout <laughs> year for for white women in sports or, or women's sports? I think it's a breakout year for women in sports, and I think that Caitlin Clark catapulted us to be able to look at other women in sports as a whole because, I mean, we see Asia Wilson. I still think that she's the best of the best. Now we got Angel Reese, who's the front runner for rookie, like things like that. So she catapulted it, but I would say women as a whole. I agree with what you say, that, but we're going to give the props <laughs> to the person who got the eyes. I'm not disagreeing with what you say. I think you're 100% yeah. right. But we're we going to give get the, her to acknowledge I'm, it. I'm giving the person the props who got the eyes on women's sports. Like you just said, Asia Wilson is back in the front runner for MVP. Like she's going wild the last two, three weeks, but. I, I like I like her by watching her more than anybody right now, more, more than Olympic practices and everything else. She's got a really, really good game. Um, and she's kind of slacking. I don't think she's slacking at the beginning of the year. I think that she was more about trying to get her teammates involved. She realized that that's not going to get us the victories we need to get. She ended up crying on the panel. And ever since that little emotional outburst she had, she's been going crazy. But what you're saying is I, I'm not – Disagreeing with you a little bit, <laughs> but let's give the props <laughs> to the niggas who got the spotlight on the women. That's what I'm saying. Now, it's like we was talking about with the Olympics, right? This is the people that's in other countries' time to shine to show that yeah. they could be in the NBA or play amongst the greatest players in the world because the spotlight is on you. We sending the best of the best, so the so-called best of the best from America into the world and over to Paris to play against other teams. So the other teams that may have niggas that like, oh, they niggas love Luca. I've been killing Luca for like seven years in a row. Yeah. Oh, I love the Joker. Man, we've been killing the Joker. We don't know. Just because they, they get over here, we don't know that it's people that's not over there that's better or on their level. And this is kind of their opportunity for their eyes to be on uh, different players around the world. But Thanks, Caitlin Clark, for letting us see, showing us, rather, other players that needed to be acknowledged because they're just as good as Caitlin Clark or better than Caitlin Clark. I just wanted to point out that it was the great white hope that got the eyes on everybody else in women's sports. <laughs> Tommy Morris. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's about. Okay, so we're going to hit two more of these categories and we'll move on to the next topic. So the Pat Tillman Award for Service was won by Prince Harry. Maurice, what do you think? What did he win? I guess, what, what did he do that would make him win it? Yeah, so he I'm, created I'm the he Invictus Games, a sporting event for active duty and veteran service members who have been wounded, injured, or sick on the job. So they gave him that service award. Oh, um, I, I don't. I don't really want to know what it entails, but I think like I think if he just even stepped in the sporting arena and sporting space, they probably figured it's notable and honorable to just acknowledge uh, his contributions. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this is no knocks to him, but I'm pretty sure uh, athletes are known for doing a bunch of philanthropic work and, and heroic things. I'm pretty sure there was somebody else. Do, do, do you know who else was in that category? I'm looking. I don't. It think wasn't a category. Had, yeah. yeah, it was just an award. It wasn't a category. Oh, just, oh, got you. Yeah, I just don't know much about it, so I don't want to speak about, you know, Prince Harry's, um, the games, you know, one way or another, but I just I just know a ton of athletes on a consistent basis do a lot of honorable stuff in regards to philanthropic work, and I would have thought that you could have got somebody else, but I can also see them trying to acknowledge uh, Prince Harry just because of who he is. What exactly did he do again? That Yeah, he just created a... Um my words he created the invictus game so it was a sporting event for active duty in the military that are injured that's cool <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it <laughs> 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 uh, okay i think more, i think more importantly to be honest with you I don't, I don't know about much about Prince Harry and anything else, but I think the people should focus on because people don't even know who Pat Tillman is. And he's, he's yeah. given the Pat Tillman Award, and people just hear awards and be like, oh, you got the Pat Tillman Award. Do people even know who Pat Tillman yeah, is? Yeah, we know who Pat but, Tillman is. Yeah, but that's the point America may not. Yeah. Pat Tillman was playing for the Arizona Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Outstanding player, and when we went to war, he stopped 
playing to go to war for our country. And a lot of people are like, yo, you bugging. He's 27 years old in the prime of his career and said, fuck that. America's fighting. I'm going to fight. And for him to have that courage and that bravery to say, fuck millions of dollars, I'm a real American, um, that means a lot. That really says a lot. It's like a lot of people don't know Lomachenko, he took off a, a year, a year and a half to go fight for Ukraine when they're fighting Russia. The nigga put his boxing career down and picked up a, a pistol and an AK and said, let's go to war. Like You have to have a different mentality for that shit because you're making a lot of money and you're saying, fuck the money. This country means more to me than the money. And uh, I salute them just for that because I don't know if I could do that. But I think pointing out what the award is means more mm -hmm. to American than giving it to somebody where Americans aren't that familiar with people from overseas such as the Prince. I'm not being funny when I say this, I'm being totally serious. When the Queen died, maybe three, four years ago, I was looking at Instagram and everybody was like, who, Queen Latifah? They didn't, they didn't even understand who the Queen yeah. is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No disrespect yeah. to the Queens. Americans are not that uh, knowledgeable on the royalty overseas because we don't have royalty. Shit is really kind of crazy to America. What you mean the queen, the king, the prince, and all this other shit? So I think pointing out what the award is um, is more important to who got it. Not saying that the prince didn't deserve it, but I think the people need to realize what the Pat Tillman Award, award means. Yeah. And and that was a great great take, Killer. Um, when you think about Prince uh, Prince Henry, I think Lomachenko should have won the award. If you think about what you just shared, exact because that's more in exact detail what Tillman did, and he lost his yeah. life out there. Right. So when you take somebody who risked his all to go and and defend their country, this is another person that followed their um that footstep. It's a good point. You know, I think that I think. But why it I couldn't be the Muhammad Ali people. Award? Muhammad Ali did the same thing. <laughs> Muhammad Ali actually said he's not going to fight. Yeah. So oh yeah, you're right. He didn't do the same. Thing. Yeah, he didn't do the same thing. Okay, and then the winner for best NBA player is Luca. Maurice, what do you think? No, I thought I thought they were going to give it to um, either Tatum or Brown. Um, be it that they won the championships and that those things would, I, I thought that those things would have weighed in, uh, but I don't know when they cut off, when they do the voting for this stuff or whatever. Uh, Luca, you know, great player, but I would have gave it to, I, I think the most honorable thing would have been, would, would have been to give it to either Tatum or Brown for the Celtics. Well, actually, Mo, I, I disagree with you right there. Um, if it was a cutoff date and it was the regular season, I think we've, slighted SGA enough. SGA definitely had like a breakout year and could have easily been the the player of the year in the NBA. Um, I don't know when the cutoff date was. I don't know if the championships, I don't know if championships were included. They didn't say when the cutoff date. It wasn't like the regular MVP award when it's a cutoff date. So I'm not disagreeing with Mace or disagreeing with you, Mo. I just think it's a, a, a yeah, opinion. And um, damn, that was a good one. SGA or Luca, it's, it's really great. Um, those are really great choices. But if you're going to ask me my personal opinion, mm -hmm. and I don't know because we don't know what the cutoff date, if it's regular season championships included, et cetera, they actually gave Jalen Brown an award for best player in a championship series of any sport. So maybe they didn't want to give him more than one award. But if you're going to ask me my my personal opinion for best player in the 2024 season, I'm going to go with the Joker. He actually won his third MVP this year. Uh, we're talking about Steph Curry has two, LeBron has four. Um, I'm just thinking that some people with multiple um, uh, MVPs. We got to think about this. Kevin Durant only has one. Kobe Bryant only has one. Uh, Steve Nash has to. Um, for him to get three league MVPs is amazing. Um, this is not a regular thing. Like we, we sit here and talk about how much Kobe's an assassin 
and people have some people have them second on the list. I'll have them third, uh, which is still I'm talking about in the history of the NBA, and he has one MVP ever, which is I, it's kind of crazy. I don't know how you know I wasn't monitoring it back then, but I think you can't frown at three league championship uh, league MVP. How many so, does Shaq have? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I know he maybe four. Yeah, I believe four. I know LeBron's at four right now. Um, but that can't be slighted. I'm not going to throw down the rug. And it's possible that last year, not not the year just passed, 2023, that he could have won that year as well. And B, they won the award, but the Joker probably missed the last seven or eight games when they were going neck and neck for us for the title. I mean, for the for the award, but the Joker uh, got hurt and he wanted to ramp up for the playoffs. So. This is a potential four-time MVP. And I see a lot of players that get mad at it. I've seen Boogie Cousins get mad at it. I've seen a few people <laughs> be mad talking about, how is we giving this nigga three, MV, three league MVPs? Listen, players don't and like that shit. they was back to back. They yeah. would have been back to back, four right. straight. Right, exactly. So we got a three out of four <laughs> league MVP. So I'm going to go, I'm not mad at SGA. I'm not mad at. And uh, yeah, and so I'm not mad at Luca, but if you're gonna ask me, I'm just gonna like I don't know when the cutoff date is. I'm just gonna have yeah. to go with the Joker being consistent this long. Yeah, and I'll just add really quick. I'm not mad at Luca either, but looking at the nominees, Jason Tatum, SG, and Jokic, to me, especially on the logic of title town, what would make sense would be Jason Tatum or Jokic. Luca's a phenomenal player, but if we're looking at specific stats, I kind of feel like it doesn't make as much sense but he did work his ass off to perform well for his team so it's you like said jason that tatum or or, or Jokic. i feel like that would oh. make sense to me though but of course luca played phenomenal so okay so moving along yeah maurice i was gonna ask a question do you think anything on and this is both uh cam and mace is there anything, even you stat, is there any, do y'all, when y'all see these guys, of course they play well, Luca and a Joker, but do you think that there's any motivation or intention to help to grow the game internationally more by placing these guys as notable best players or, or them getting these awards? Mm. Are you saying it's a hidden agenda? <laughs> That's yeah, exactly like, you know, what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah, like, I yeah, was, it's, I, it's I, I get order. exactly what you're saying. My bad, I didn't mean to cut you, I'm sorry. Yeah, if, if I'm an owner, right, and you, you hear the same things we hear, the AAU program in America is watered down. Mm -hmm. the, the youth development league with, you know, what they do overseas, they teach a lot more fundamentals, right? And if I was looking at this thing from a business standpoint, which most of these guys do, you just say, how do I get better assets, right? And these guys are humans and they play ball and we do what we do in America. But I just say to myself, like, do, do, do these guys get together and you have these conversations with Adam Silver you look at this, this this new TV deal, and they have uh, they they've agreed to distribute uh, national games seven days a week on all these various platforms, and, and they paying people a shit ton of money. And do you ask yourself, do they say, hey man, we need to start letting guys believe that they can bring their talents over here, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can take them from you know their their home countries at least, so we can get better products in the NBA. As you were talking about that, Cam, that's kind of what went through my mind. You know, right. not to say that no, Joker is deserving. No, I understand what you're saying. That's a great question. It, yeah, I think um, when it comes to international players, international players, for as long as I can remember, have always been present in the NBA. Um, when you look at Vladi Divac, Divac, when you got Sabonis, when you got Petrovic, um, a lot of these guys were here for, for the early – Elite, I think at least the late 80s, early 90s. And um, now it looks like the way to expand the game. I remember some summers they were having um, camps in Africa and you would see like um, different players that went to Duke and different different guys that went to, that, that came into the NBA, they was doing camps for the kids. So there's been a long time, you know, making this happen to get those players to the NBA. But it's always been a plan. I don't think it's something that just came about. It's something that always been there to maximize the dollar. You you look back to Yao Ming when he went to Houston. That was a yeah. that was a great um, way to bring even the Asian culture into 
the NBA. Then you see Jeremy Lin when he had that week. I mean, he had Ben and Jerry ice cream. It's always been a way to market to new to new buyers, you know. So, and with this TV deal, it just gives them more money to play with to to market to more countries. Because I remember when I was out in Australia, they wasn't watching. They wasn't watching NBA, and I thought that was crazy. You know, they wasn't watching it at all. It, it wasn't coming on the channels. Everything was like soccer, and I I think between Adam Silver. And the rest of the team, they just thought about it and say, you know what, we got to get this everywhere. Because the same way we watch it here, they want people watching it all over the world. And bringing those players over here give us a better um, advantage to be able to get that to those markets. I see niggas bust niggas' ass. That's just that. <laughs> I watch the Joker bust niggas' ass. I watch Luca bust niggas' ass. I would sit there and watch Drazen Petrovic bust niggas' ass. Yeah, we want the best niggas in the world. That's the more of the story. And I get what you're saying, Mo. It's like this. Yo, Larry, let me ask you a question real quick because you in the baseball. I ain't really into that shit. No disrespect to what I'm about to say. I'm asking a question. Bring the microphone to you. Pause. When it comes to baseball, this is a room, and I don't know because you're in the baseball. I'm not. Is it true that they go get more Spanish people so they could cheat them out the dollar as opposed to black or white Americans? Because... They don't know as much as business as well, so they'll go to South America or Puerto Rico or whatever. And I'm not disrespecting, I'm just telling you what they be saying because they could get over. I definitely believe that that's the case on why they get a lot of the Spanish players. Right, because? Because they can get over on them. Why would they be able to get over? Because they don't know the business, they're poor, they're extremely poor over there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they start those kids playing, and they give them, they really sell them a dream, mm -hmm. like a real dream, right. and, and that's their ticket, right? right? So so the point being, the reason I'm saying that is, and I'm not saying people around the world don't know business, but if you could bring somebody over here yeah. that's just as good as the American and not have to pay them as much in the beginning, you know they're going to come over here, it's like, Oh, hold on, hold the fuck on. I ain't know that all this was going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not say, I'm not calling nobody dumb, I'm not calling anybody stupid, because if you don't know, you're not dumb. It's about learning. Yeah. So if you could get over and think, yo, I, I caught this nigga for sure, this league, it's man. It's like, yeah, you want your sister to come over? Yeah. You want your aunt to come over? Yeah. I had to pay for that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not saying that's the case for everything, but if you could get the best player for cheaper in the beginning, because we, we sitting here seeing Luca contract, we sitting here seeing the Joker contract, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying that they was getting jerked at all. I'm just trying to tell you how it works because if they would kick, if you could get paid at home the same amount of money you could get paid here, they would stay home. We just talked about the other day that yeah. nigga, the Joker didn't want to stay for the parade after he won. He like, parade? Nah, I got to get back to the yeah. crib, my nigga. What you mean? It's a parade, nigga. Par I got to stay three more days. He was trying to get home. And all them videos we saw that summer when he won the championship looked like he was having wow fun. They carry him in the cars. He in the streets drunk. You got to think that nigga's a super duper legend over there. If he's old. Imagine how they treat him in Denver, how they treat him where he's from. So I get what you're saying, Mo, and... and um thinking that it may be a hidden agenda to try and make these players better than American players. But we watching them bust American players' ass. Pause. <laughs> we actually see it. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't like, like it ain't like we jerking niggas like, nah, nigga killed them niggas. We actually sitting here watch one be threw it behind his back, dunked on the nigga. We actually seeing Luca fucking average fucking 35, 34 points in the conference finals. We're actually seeing the Joker win three out of four League MVPs, three out of four years. We're actually watching it, and I'm. And those are just three names that I'm bringing up re mm -hmm. recently. We could go back to like May said. We all sit here and talk about Sabonis on uh, Sacramento. Do you know his father? Father was I. Right. He wasn't. Yeah. The father was I. Right. Detlef Shrimp, yeah. Jason Petrovich, Gugliotta. Yeah. These are just little Tony uh, coach. Yeah, Tony Kukoc. coach. Great, great one, Tony Kukoc. coach. Yeah. Absolutely, nobly. Yeah, so yeah, Ginobili, you know, but Tony Parker, these are these Parker, are yep. yeah. So I don't think I think what you're saying is right, but niggas is like, and what Mesa's saying is right too. But I just think niggas is like, 
good. I'm glad niggas getting better around the world so we can market more. It isn't like, to me, I don't think they're being pushed. We're forcing uh, international players on ourselves. I think that we're observing and we're, we're respecting what they do. Do you, do you think that the rules over there too, like of them playing at 16 years old, 15, 16 years old, playing professional, whereas like a 15-year-old kid can't go to the NBA and play those games? Like over there, Lucas, I think you told me before, me, you were talking, you said Lucas was like 15 playing against yeah, he's all a pro. these players. So mm-hmm. the restriction of NBA players mm-hmm. um, hurt, hurts us in America as well. Yeah, and it, and it sometimes can hurt the business because – when they're when they're signed to these teams, I forgot who who that was. What was the point guard name? Oh man, Rubio, Ricky Rubio. Yeah, Ricky Rubio. Where he was already a pro in another country, so they already had him locked in in the deal. So if y'all want him to come over there, you're really buying him from me. Yeah, you know, and and that creates that kind of scenario, and and I think that that messes up the business. But talent wise, is a great is a great idea. I don't know. That's a great question, right? Because all I've been hearing is that AAU sucks. It's watered down. Yeah. It's fucking, the parents think the kids are better than what they are. I've been hearing this for like the last year and a half, that AAU in America sucks. And as much as I want these young kids to get their money, I'm a super duper supporter of getting their money. It's kind of fucking it up a little bit too because they're getting money and sometime if you're not one of them ones with your parents on your back, like, and I know, I know I'm using the highest a high example, but if you don't have a Deion Sanders like Shador or something like that, you're getting money and you're not and you may not be perfecting your skill set uh, yeah. because you're just good enough and they be like, oh, you're gonna go pro and go pro, but you're not working as hard as somebody like Chris Webber or Jalen. Yeah. Jalen Rose or people who's like, I got to keep playing because I got to get this money. You're already getting the money. So some of these players' hunger dies down yeah. because they're getting the money right then and there. And I'm, I've been an advocate of them niggas getting the money for a long time, but I'm seeing poor and more poor and poor play uh, throughout the years. And the niggas overseas is coming over here. This year, like we said, we talked about two of the top three picks. It's not from America. This year, I know it was a weak draft and all that, but what are we doing? We're losing control, and that's why I was so adamant about the USA winning gold this year. Don't let us win gold and LeBron is out there and Kevin Durant is out there and Steph Curry is out there and Jason Tatum is out there and Ant-Man is out there and Joel Embiid is out there and we don't win. Now, we're favorites to win, but this will be a problem for Mm -hmm. America. Okay. I'll say this. All right, let you go. Now, I want to respond to what Cam was talking yeah. about. Where he made me think of something where you can you can almost parallel it to music, music and sports, right? Where when you all were probably starting to do music, y'all did it from like a passionate place, right? And then there's people like who kind of like it who get into it because they look at it as a means to an end, right? Even though y'all probably wanted to make money from doing music, right? And I kind of look at like where sports has come, like sports were like you know when you come up in a neighborhood, you're playing basketball, football you know, racing in the street and doing things competitive. Like I'm 40 years old, so I come up in that era, right? Uh, but now, like when you see these astronomical numbers, there's a lot of parents who just maybe push their kids into sports just for that, you know what I'm saying? And so where like once the once the dollar is realized, it was never in this person to want to become great at this thing, right? You don't really have people pursuing like, I want to be great or I want to be the best or, or like when you had rap back in the day, like it was like competitive, you know what I'm saying? Just because somebody wanted to say I'm nice with you, right? And that was like the social currency. And like when you just said that about, you know, AAU basketball, it just made me think, I said, I wonder if that like is like, I wonder if you ask a kid, do you love the sport and love the game or do you love but, like let, all let the me give, that let you me give you a, Let me give you a quick answer for that, right? <clears throat> I don't know if niggas was delusional or not, but niggas thought they was going to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? At least. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We didn't, Mo, you were, you really yeah. was on pace to go to the, you did NFL and all that. I'm a two guard and I'm six feet in 1990, whatever. It's not even realistic now that I sit there and look back at it. But we practiced every day. We would yeah. go to the park every night. 
Look, Sham God right yeah. now. Sham God is outside the window right now. Throw the window up there real quick. That's how I mean. He ain't even come in here. <laughs> Sham God just chilling outside right now. The coach of the that one of the coaches down Maverick. That's our homie. He just chilling. He made it to the NBA for a couple yeah. of years. And he's a coach in the NBA now. But niggas will be outside dribbling the ball at night. All night. All night. Niggas will go to the park by themselves, shoot by themselves. Nobody there shooting the dark, shooting the rain. Do anything they could do to get better in basketball. Play one-on-one, three in the morning, et cetera, et cetera. Consistently. Yeah. We got a record deal. We ain't do none of that shit no more. <laughs> we figured out where the money was at. <laughs> Play when we got a chance. <laughs> niggas, did, niggas, niggas got chubby. Niggas, celebrity did, games. Yeah, and all that. Niggas, we wasn't going out there no more every night. And we were still like 19 years old, 20 years old. That shit. <laughs> niggas, the point being is we need to figure out if I got to work out every day to get to this money, <laughs> then I'm going to work out every day. But now that I figure out where the money at, I, I'll go play ball once in a while when I get a chance. I don't know if that answers that your question. Good, that, was good, that was a good point about it messing everything up. Because <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> that's exactly what I see. When we went to the finals or or what was that? The, um, what was that in the, um, the NCAAs? And we saw the team play from Kansas yeah, or whatever. Kansas State. And I saw niggas on the bench iced up. I said, yo, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> I knew right then and there, this ain't gonna work. You can't get, you can't pay niggas pause before they do the job. Not black niggas, you cannot do that. That is a, I don't know who came up with it, but listen. But see, that's the catch 22. You know when I, I heard, um, and real quick, I know we gotta go to break in a minute. But I heard Andre Inquidala say this. He was on, I believe, with Carmelo or Gilbert. I, don't, I forget who his show he's on. But he made a great point. He was saying NIL is fucking up high school and college because they're getting paid and it's, it's um, diminishing their skill set. They're not as hungry as they need to be because um, they're getting money that certain NBA players are. Some may be getting more than a rookie in the NBA yeah. with endorsements. So he was saying that. And when I thought about that was this. NIL, and I'm not saying it's going to happen because I, I want niggas to get their money. NIL should have money put in an escrow account till you're 21 years old and then you could go get it. Because you may sit there and be like, I got money on the way, but at least if you still working hard to, to perfect your craft or your sport or whatever you're doing, you, the money's not in there. Maybe you take 10, 15% so you can survive, but you know the money's sitting there. So if you do a deal with Gatorade for a million dollars, it's there when you turn 21. If you do a deal with Nike, it's there. But if you're giving it to a nigga that's 17, 18 now, I know some 35-year-olds yeah. that if you give them a million dollars, they're going to lose their motherfucking mind. So imagine an 18, 19, or 20-year-old. That was my suggestion when I heard Andre Inquidala say that, but I do believe the kids need to get some of this money because they're making billions of dollars uh, whether it's through high school or college sports but it is diminishing some of their skill set as well yeah I agree I agree with killer I think the the age limit need to be the 25 though 25 so you have to go to college you have to kind of pursue something and not just do it for the hustle of yo know, I get 21 I get the bread anyway so niggas don't even go to college so yeah. that's what I was thinking. But that was an excellent take. No, I appreciate it. I, I'd say 21 because you're going to NBA. You only got to be 19 to go to mm -hmm. NBA anyway. So you're going to get the NBA contract when you're in, in, in 19 years old anyway. And you're going to get the endorsement deals outside of that uh, when you're 19, 20, 20 years old. But if you're 16 and you're, get, and you're sitting here getting these awards like tonight, and I know we brought this up about highlighting women's sports as it should be highlighted. Yeah. But the breakout player of the year this year was Juju Watkins over, what's the nominees? I can't even tell you right now. But last year it was Angel Reese for breakout star players. Uh, and this is, and when we're talking about this, we're talking about their um, competition or in the categories of the pro players. Who's the? Yeah, Haley Bryant, CJ Stroud, and Wendy. Yeah. 
Kaylin uh, on Palmy, Juju Watkins. Now think about this. And note and shout out to Juju. You deserve it, boo. You're a cutie pie. I think you I think you're cute now. <laughs> I'm going to wait till you get in your 2021s, but baby here's on the court. I like that. Over Wimby and CJ Stroud. Breakout player of the year. Now you talk about forces shit, Mo. <laughs> she ain't even win the chip. <laughs> I'm not saying she ain't nice. Juju is nice as a motherfucker. CJ Stroud, CJ though? Stroud, yeah. They forced <laughs> CJ Stroud, come on now. Juju over CJ? It's a nigga, nigga said, nah, nigga, this woman's here, yeah. nigga. The fuck is you talking Ladies about? Ladies night. Nice, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> over Wimby and CJ? I'm happy you got it. I'm not down. I'm just saying, it's let's, let's nice. think about who's in the category for breakout player of the year. CJ Stroud, hot behind that. Yeah. He'll be all right. Okay. I'm not mad. Don't, I want niggas to be like, Kim, man, I'm, I'm down. I'm just saying, I want y'all to know who's in the category, <laughs> who she beat. I'm voting for. And I'm not I'm not hating. I'm just the objective voice on this show. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to break. When we return, we will discuss Bronny's performance in the California Classic. Don't go anywhere. Pink horsepower. She called this thing about toxic. What's happening, baby? Baby, what's happening? Why you walking like that? That's how... That's how I walk. And then, like, you come on breathing on me like that. I fucking breathe to live. And, like, you used to be dark skinned, and now you act like hella light skinned. Are you fucking blind? I'm dark skinned. What, what the fuck? And then, like, look at your beard. The fuck is your wrong with my looks beard? You're stupid. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I don't even like it. The way you breathe in, all of that. Has this ever happened to you? Your girl seems to be mad, angry, upset. She's frustrated. It's only one way to handle that. Pink horsepower. Oh. No. But your Remem breath, remember? But your breath is really refreshing. No, 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 oh, I'm no. I'm just trying to give you a massage. Plus, have I told you how good your beard looks lately? It looks so good. No! It looks PHP. It works every time. Wait! Where you going? Welcome back. Now let's get into our Underdog Fantasy picks of the day. Today, the Fever will play the Mercury. Underdog Fantasy has Caitlin Clark at 18 and a half points. Do you have her higher or lower mace? 18 and a half? Yeah. Who they playing? The Mercury. Mm. Nah, she ain't gonna have higher than 18 against um Diana. Diana definitely is coming to shut that down. Um, I'm going low. Okay. She just had that on Diana already. What she had against her last time? It's crazy. I'm going high. I think I think the <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Like, that wasn't a pause, no nothing. Larry's just funny. Anyways, back. I don't know. I don't know if I said pause or not. No, I'm talking about some chicks, but <laughs> females, no disrespect. But I, I would say, uh, I think she's really fun in her rhythm. Um, not whether it doesn't matter against what team. Uh, you know, it took her a while to get a little comfortable. Um, she had 29 last game, I believe it was triple double. High Angel Reese. That's why I said their teams might not be at the top of the conference, but this Larry Bird Magic Johnson thing is kind of happening. Um, so I'm going to go higher. Okay. Aaliyah Boston is at three and a half first quarter points. Do you ever higher or lower? See what they're doing. <sighs> See, I like Aaliyah Boston, but it's just something about like Aaliyah Boston is, Angel Reese is doing what Aaliyah Boston should be doing. You know, Aaliyah Boston's killing in um, South Carolina. She got uh, with the fever and of course you need help, but just having the fever be a number one pick again, that goes to show she can't do it by herself. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to sit here and, and down. The answer is lower. And down yeah, to Leah Boston. Lower. And I'm definitely going to change my pick for, um, for Caitlin Clark for higher. Okay. And to answer your question, she had 15 points, but there's okay. she had a migraine. Yeah, but she won, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good game. I remember watching it. Yeah. Okay, and then Brittany Griner's at 27.5 points and rebounds combined. Do you have a higher or lower mace? Lower. 
I'm going to go Loa. Okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app, and you can make your picks, too. We are joined back with our analyst, Maurice Claret. So the Lakers Summer League team played the Heat the other night and lost 80-76. to Today, they will play the Rockets. But Bronny James in that game had three points. He was one for three from the field, five rebounds, and three assists. I know we've been hearing a lot of different expectations for Bronny, but what are yours, and what do you see happening for Bronny moving forward? Murray's first. Um, my expectation is, and, and we, we talked about it earlier in the show when uh, Cam was talking about, you know, kids playing over in different countries and developing. But I think that uh, we're watching Bronny do that in real time. You know, he was the, the 55th pick. Uh, he didn't have a ton of uh, playing time last year in real games with um, USC. And for me, my expectation is that he's probably going to, like, just have his growth spurt over the next two years. I don't think he's going to be, you know, some amazing breakout player, but he'll get his reps, you know, be it this preseason, he'll get his reps at practice, and just over time he'll become a better player. Maybe by the time Bryce has uh, has come to the NBA and he has this spotlight off of him, you know, his father did well with the spotlight. His father grew up different, raised different, you know, went through a whole different gauntlet to become who he is, has a whole different skill set, uh, a whole different talent, everything. But Bronny is – is um, and I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but he's going through his 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 developmental his developmental phase right now in front of everybody with a lot more criticism, uh, just because of who his father is. So I don't really have like some crazy expectations for him. I'm happy he's out there. Happy he's getting reps. I've seen that you know they tried to make fun of him uh, when he was trying to uh, guard the guy in the post, but you know he had a decent game, and you know that's uh, that's my opinion on it. Um, Mo, when you say he's going to have a growth spurt, are you referring to his height or are you talking about his game or both? Boss? No, it, it's mentality. You know, I think that he has to, I think he has to grow up under his father's tutelage, but he has to have the, and I don't know, I don't have a, cho- a better choice of words, but he's going to have to like develop like that, that fuck these niggas mentality. You know, and I think just growing up the way he's did was Sierra Canyon. He grew up with his father in Cleveland and just the way they were living. But at some point when everybody's trying to bully you or everybody's trying to impose their will on you on behalf of them may not liking your father, them may not liking your family's success, them believing that you don't belong there, you're going to have to develop something internally. I know that y'all is jokingly saying it the other day about taking him to Harlem, but that's all really what you're saying. I need you to get you around the niggas who who ruthless, who don't give a fuck, and that 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 don't it actually grow wasn't sort joking. Of white gloved. Yeah, we actually <laughs> wasn't joking. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, but y'all know what I'm talking. I don't I don't know how else to say it, but it's it's like you get to that point where you're saying like, uh, Dad, I love you, and you removed a bunch of barriers and boundaries, and you put these things in place for me but you have to go through adverse shit to develop your own mentality. And LeBron can do everything for him. He can, you know, he can have the invisible hand behind creating the the appropriate circumstances, right? He's supposed to do that. But in order for Bronny to succeed on that court, he's going to have to look people in their face and say, fuck you, nigga. Like, niggas ain't about to bully me. Niggas ain't about to chump me out. And, like, you just, you, you only get that just through adversity. I think, like, when you look at LeBron, LeBron was so good that there were some things that LeBron probably removed out of his way just because he didn't want to deal with them. But I don't think you can do the same thing with your son. And, I, and that's a whole different conversation. And that's no slights at him. But with Bronny, you have to allow him to go through his lumps and bumps by himself in order for him to, you know, have the strength to, to develop into an NBA player. Yeah, I think when it comes to um, Bronny, as he, as he continue to play each game, I would I would really like to just see more aggression pause from him. No matter what he scores, no matter what he does, just seeing him become more assertive in that in that role because the more and more it gets to this place where he's he's having two points, he's having three points, he's having four points. I, I truly believe he'll do much better than this. Say if he was in a real game, he seemed to be like one of those players that play up to his competition. If you put him in there with his dad on the Lakers, with J.J. Redick, everybody else, can Bronny hit a shot? Yes. Will he hit a shot? Yes. Will he be able to guard some of the players at point guard? Some of them, you know. But 
I think he'll play better than what he's playing in Summer League. I think Summer League is really exposing him in a lot of ways, but it's not exposing anything that the basketball purists didn't know. I think it's exposing it to the people that thought that this idea could could work. You know, he's definitely got to prove people wrong. He definitely got to become very assertive and aggressive about everything that he's doing because right now, it is looking like we we're, we're just going to make him a pro no matter what he does and that that'll wear off really fast when it comes to people because he's starting to hear the rumblings already i disagree when i say disagree mm-hmm. no and i'm not disagreeing with you like that but i disagree on the take when i say when you say he play up to his potential I'm not waiting for another nigga that's good as me to play as good as I'm playing. If I'm playing against niggas that's not that good, supposedly, I'm scoring 70. I'm trying to break a record. <laughs> <laughs> Just told me the other day, niggas said, talking about you shook a nigga, so I just hate to acting like it was water on the floor. Listen, <laughs> I'm trying to... Yeah, nah, I'm trying to go crazy. Yo, fam, I got the record today in Animal League. It was a tournament in Gaucho Jam. I had 70 points, because I was like... <laughs> oh nah, I'm getting sick. today. I still got the record when I was 11 or 12. I said these niggas try because Animal League was like an in-house. It wasn't like outside as all gout shows. 70. That's what I'm doing when I see bombs. I'm not gonna say I'm only gonna have four and wait till I play against Young Life or Riverside <laughs> to play a good game. I'm not doing that. That's just that's why I'm saying I disagree. I'm not doing that. I see bombs attack, <laughs> nigga. Kill these <laughs> niggas. That's what I'm saying. That's the part I was disagreeing on, murder. You know damn well. Yeah. If you, if you, I'm <laughs> saying I know we wouldn't do that. I'm saying that's. <laughs> oh, what, oh, you saying that's, that's what the rich kids do? Oh, like right. if you get them against somebody's good, then he's okay. like, oh, this is a game I have to play today, because he's already on the team. He's not motivated. He's mm-hmm. clearly not motivated. But he's saying, yeah. if we're against this, and now <laughs> we're in front of Snoop, and Snoop is front row, and Drake is over there. Is he going to turn up? Absolutely, because now he's on that bright stage. He doesn't feel like he has anything to prove here. He already got signed four years, $7.9 million, right? So the summer league is for niggas who's trying to make the team. So every play, <laughs> they're trying to show you I belong on this team. Every nigga get the ball is like, look at me. Some of you pass it to a nigga, look at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When Bronny get the ball, it's like, Nigga, I'm already rich. That's exactly the vibe that he gives. Okay, I understand. When he if you look at from that point of view, I, I, yeah. I, I get it. But that's not. I'm not talking about you. If that's if that's your mentality enough, you I don't know if that is. That's what Mace is saying. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying a hundred percent. But if that is, too. that's not gonna make Snoop come to the game. That's not gonna get the players to come to the game. They're gonna be like, I'll come see Pops. But no. look. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying he'll wait to play when it's the Lakers. Like when they when everybody's in the front row, then he'll, you know, he'd be dunking, when, doing when, all No, no I just no, I'm, I understand your point totally, but what I'm saying is having these games is not motivating me to come wait to the Lakers game. Like I'm gonna still go if you're saying like Jack Nicholson and everybody I go anyway. But <laughs> these California classic games, it's not be like I, it's not one of them joints where you be like, yo, I gotta beat traffic. I got to hurry up. Them niggas come in, so I'm not disagreeing with your point. I'm just saying that these games are not motivating me to want to see him play uh, against the higher level because, look, when you I, and like you said, when he plays against with the Lakers, et cetera, et cetera. What I've been seeing, and Mo, listen, this is why I fuck with you, Mo. Real Ohio niggas, just not going to say nothing at all about it. <laughs> Growth spurt. <laughs> and we watching them develop in front of our eyes. I dig it, nigga. I dig it. I, I, I still got some Harlem left in me. <laughs> I still was. <laughs> nigga, let, That's why I'm saying it, because I know nigga. y'all ain't going to say I, I just said, yeah. my nigga, now I just, I just said, with you, you talk about he waiting. I'm not saying, you will be in nice too and I, that's my nephew <laughs> you see rich paul came in yesterday like yo i said richard did your job now it's time for enough to do his job yeah you'll be a nice talk about now i think he wait and mo talking about gross spurt <laughs> and we watching the development 
Look, man, I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm being honest. That's I love you nothing. Don't, you don't I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm being honest. I don't like it. I'm being I'm not gonna even sit here and act like I do like it. I don't. Secondly, what I'll tell you is this: it is not by accident. It is not by accident. I'm telling everybody it, the family at Clutch, the J, of course, my James family and everybody else. These Mikey Williams highlight tapes is coming out of nowhere. Where he's looking like an animal who just, just got out of a cage. These fucking Mikey Williams. I don't know if you guys been seeing it, but since Bronny been playing, the last three days I've been seeing some wild shit from Mikey Williams that I didn't even know. I know Mace used to talk about him uh, a couple years ago. I don't know if he if he uh, grew more into being a man, got stronger, because I seen some of his high school shit. The shit I've been seeing the last three days is Crazy. his workout. I don't think he waiting for the California. You talking about the California classic? This is what I'm talking about. You talking about the wait for the niggas to come to the Blake again? I think if I think if Mikey is in the California classic right now, he's going he's going, nuts, to, he's going crazy. He's going to break a rim. He's going to try and shake Nick to the. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. You talking yeah. about they got to wait. Put Mikey in the California classic tonight. <laughs> that nigga gonna get forty. Yeah. That nigga, I, I don't know. He was the, looking crazy. I don't know if the crazy. audience seen it. Look, real quick, Nick. Listen, I don't even know the, what page it is. If you got a hashtag, hashtag Mikey Williams. May's been telling us about him for a couple years, but. The new Mikey Williams since the gun chase. Nigga <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get my credit. I just told Nigga you. Nigga said, but the new Mikey. Bro, what, I'm, try, what that, I'm trying to tell you. That's what he's been doing. Bro, but what I'm telling you, I seen this highlight. <laughs> I seen this highlight, um, his high school chase. I'm not. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just saying, <laughs> how them nigga want more credit than you give him? I said I wouldn't even known about the nigga if you ain't telling me who he was. Nigga want more and more credit. You give a nigga <laughs> dessert. Pause. <laughs> you want ice cream. Yo, you want to tell me to the goddamn? I said I didn't know who he was till you told me. I'm just saying, I, I went and checked this highlight reel when you told me about him. It was sensational. Yeah. But, and don't get me wrong, these are all practice drills he's doing, but it's looking like, it's, it's looking like John Morant. Yeah. Um, his change of direction, Paul, is change, crazy. It's ridiculous. And, and, and the authority on the dunks and, and the, yo. Mikey in the classic tonight, 40. He not waiting to Jack Nicholson and them niggas get to the arena and all that. And it's not by act. That's what I was saying before I go. It's not by accident that these tapes are popping up. They like, oh, this what y'all like? <laughs> we show you a monster, nigga. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Hashtag Mikey Williams. Y'all want to see you some wild shit. I don't think I've seen a better practice tape in probably three, four, five years. Practice tape is crazy. Can I ask y'all to a question? When y'all played high school, did y'all, um, like when you were in like ninth to 10th grade, did y'all both play like varsity? Mm -hmm. Y'all both played varsity in the mm -hmm. ninth, ninth to 10th grade? Mm -hmm. how, how was it for y'all when y'all went up? Did y'all dominate right away or no? I'm just curious. I, I didn't know if y'all, like, 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 was in a, like, like, I know you're ninth to 10th grade. You playing against guys that are older. Like, I've been playing unlimited, unlimited noise since I was 13, 14. Okay. So, when you're 12 and under is biddies, 14 under is midges, like 16 under juniors, the 18 under seniors. I played all of them, all them yeah. since I was 12, 13 years old. So it didn't really. So it didn't affect you at nah, all? Nah, it didn't yeah, affect yeah, okay, me. That's all yeah, right. we, we was always playing up. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got you. I just I was curious. And I, was, and, and I didn't get to, me and Mason didn't get to the same school. I, I played ninth grade somewhere else. But um, it ain't like Catholic school in New York. Like they, you got, I would have never did that anyway. You know, you got freshman, junior varsity, the varsity. I wasn't, I'm him, not yeah. doing that shit, nigga. I'm, yeah. I'm on. I'm varsity from the jump, nigga. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I ain't doing no junior varsity. I'm, I'm already playing against grown men at 13, 14 years old. I got you. Okay, and then before we go, we got to discuss Dwayne Wade. So he reveals he's considering creating a nail care line. He oh said one of his favorite pastimes is getting <laughs> manicures with his daughter. Do this every what happened to get paid, young nigga? Get paid. Get paid, young nigga. Get paid. <laughs> Maurice, thanks for being here. That's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is.